Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrell. Today we are joined by some of our friends from AMD, in particular the AMD Software Group, uh, as we're going to talk about some of the changes that have come in recent software releases. We're going to answer some questions from the live audience as well as people who have submitted them on the website ahead of time and basically get an idea of what the mindset is for uh, the most recent kind of big release of drivers you put out there uh, and what's what we can expect coming in the, in the future as well. First, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves and tell our audience who you are. Hi, I'm German Singh. Uh, I do product marketing for AMD. Uh, basically, these slides that you see back here, uh, I've created. I'm basically a glorified <laughs> slide creator. <laughs> How, how long do you have to go to school for that, to be a glorified slide creator? Maybe six or seven years yeah. of professional college. PhD. Having used PowerPoint myself, I tell you, it's a very <laughs> difficult, it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing. Uh, and I'm Adrian Costello. I do product management for Radeon Software. So um, I handle a lot of our driver feature requirements, our software roadmap, and uh, a lot of our releases. Okay, so if we have questions about uh, what's going to come up in future drivers, you're just going to tell us all about oh, that. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to just today. tell you guys everything we're doing for the next two or three years for sure. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> um, so let's kind of dive into this, right? So we have, we have a little presentation here that we'll walk through. It'll be light, and we're going to go demonstrate some of the capabilities that you've added. You just released 17.7.2, uh, which is an interesting kind of shift for you guys, right? We're kind of used to one major release per year. Uh, but this was a major release, I guess you would call it, sure, yeah. before that, right? And, and from what I'm telling, we're still going to see something else later in the year, too. So what was kind of the reasoning behind this launch and compared to previous? So let's go back to December. In December, uh, we released uh, Radeon Software Crimson Relay Edition. Mm -hmm. um, like previous years, uh, it's our big annual software release. Um, and what we were looking for for this year was to um, look at user feedback, um, so if you go to radeoncom feedback yep. um, you can see a lot of uh, user-requested um, features and different things that we can add into Radeon software. So we really wanted to add on to this um, and then change our software based off what users have requested. Hmm. So really, uh, this launch is about um, the features that are requested by gamers, and then it's refined by RTG. I think the other big point there is um, we're still going to have that big release again at the end of the year. So right. we're kind of adding just another one in. We had a lot of great stuff we were working on, and we thought it warranted another big release, uh, you know, a little bit more like, mid-year. You don't feel like it's going to undercut the, uh, the importance we have, or value of the stuff coming in? We have some great stuff coming end of year, so uh, I'm excited for end of year as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about this one a little bit. All right. Um, I do want to remind everybody that we are going to give away some hardware as well. Uh, AMD is giving us two MSI Radeon RX 580 Gaming X cards. We actually have one running in our system here. Not the one we're going to give to you, but we, we just happen, actually happen to have one here. Um, so card. we have an 8 gig, yeah, it's an excellent card. 8 gig and a 4 gig card. Uh, we're going to give them away. The way we're going to give them out is through questions that we think are really good. So um, the way to get your question seen for that reason is uh, if you go to PCPer.com, and you look for the page that is describing today's live stream, it will be you know, a couple handful of posts down. Leave a comment there with your question. Um, if we pick your question, we think it's a good question, we're going to give away these two cards to users that way. We, all, we will do international, doesn't matter where you live, just make sure you include your email address in the anonymous capable email or uh, form for your post, otherwise I will have no way to get a hold of you uh, and we'll move on to the next person, I guess, so don't do that. Uh, so let's let's jump into it here sure. um, and and um, see what see what we're looking at. So let's jump to the first slide. Yeah. Uh, and actually, this has a lot to do with what German mentioned, which is the feedback stuff. So let's talk about the feedback stuff really quickly as well. Um, and I'm just going to all tab between Radeon settings. I hope you guys can see it uh, yeah. well there. And there's actually a little star up here. So there's a feature for that. And if you click on it, you're going to get taken to our feedback page. So the feedback page is what we've been using a lot lately. Um, a little bit on that, Ryan. In case you're maybe not familiar with it, this is. Um, a bunch of features that we've pulled from things like Reddit, our help forums, our tech sites like yourselves. We go on those forums and we ask, you know, what would you guys like to see in Radeon software? And the idea here is that we want to make a big list of things that we have uh, right here, and we want to let users vote on those. Hmm. Um, and those are kind of going to be the things that we want to put some focus on um, and put some effort towards delivering. Um, so a lot of the stuff we'll talk about today actually came from the feedback forums. Um, and that's kind of something we want to keep doing in the future, where we kind of just ask you guys what you guys really want from our software, and then we're going to work on delivering that. Um, so we basically look at the top things of this list, and those are what we're going to focus on. And then you know, in the future, we'll keep refreshing this list. So actually, I refreshed this uh, list with the release we just did for 7.8.7.2. Right. 
and then you know, end of year we'll probably so refresh again. This list is live, right? This is this is live actively. List? So as I look at this, the most requested feature is enable enhanced sync on more products, exactly. followed by loading and saving profiles for Wattman, mm -hmm. extended VSR support. Okay. Yeah. So right. these are kind of the features that you guys want right now, and these are what we're going to start looking at for uh, future releases. So okay. that's pretty cool. It's interesting. Um, so on that kind of same note, let's get back into the slides here. Uh, we have kind of two of our Radeon settings uh, updates with 17.7.2. Um, so the first one we'll talk about is the one on the left side, uh, number one. So this was the most requested uh, feature from our end users for yeah. our release. Uh, and it was basically retiring Radeon additional settings. So um, we've actually completely retired Radeon additional settings now. It's gone. Um, we've moved all of the features that were there into Radeon settings, uh, you know, the actual UI. So It was a little awkward in the old version where you revert back to the, the right. Catalyst Control Centers type, type stuff, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's exactly it, right? And, and I mean, obviously, um, with the retirement of Catalyst Control Center, there was a lot of features there, and we moved a lot of them over with our initial Radeon settings release. And this is kind of the, the culmination of the final touch of that, completely retiring it. Um, so yeah, all of these features are in there now. And so the big ones for that um, really were the color depth, pixel format controls, as well as switchable graphics and X-Connect controls. So that's also a big part of that. Um, so you don't have to go into Radeon additional settings for any of that stuff anymore, which is obviously a much better user experience for us. Um, so yeah, that was number one voted, actually. So we delivered on that. Um, and then beside that, we have number two. Uh, number two is uh, color controls for um, hue, saturation, contrast, and brightness. So this one is actually majorly, majorly requested. A lot of people like to do this for gaming. Um, and apparently, this wasn't something that could easily be done through you know, third party or Windows color settings. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought this back. It's, it's per display now, so you can do it by display. And maybe I'll actually show some of this stuff in Radeon yeah, settings so we can take a look at it. So for these stuff, or for these uh, features, most of it's in the display tab. So as you can see, we've got the color depth and pixel format controls, like hmm. I said, on those. Um, and also the color uh, per display now. So as you can see here, there's two color buttons. And you can click those per display. And you can adjust these. And I won't do it because obviously we're recording and that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could turn but, out bad. Uh, yeah, you're, you're able to do this now per display, which is great. And then again, this was another really big requested user feature, um, number two on the list. Uh, so we're really happy to you know, be able to take that feedback from our end users and start delivering on some what of those What does features. that allow a user to do? The, the per color control is it just to uh, essentially calibrate it a little bit better either towards yeah, your preferences or towards accuracy? Uh, I, I think a lot of people also use it for gaming. There are some games that um, can benefit a little bit, maybe competitively, um, from oh, okay. changing some of those settings. Okay. So I, I know I'll give an example. I know Counter Strike users like changing saturation. So uh, that was one of the big reasons okay. why saturation was continually being requested to get added back into our settings. So that was kind of the focus for this. Um, you know, top two features we delivered on those and the user feedback. So. That's pretty cool. I mean, so we, we talked about user feedback. We showed the, the, the votes. Clearly, you guys have your own internal mindset of what features are important and what fixes need to be made. Like, how do you balance what, you know, what the, the consumer base that doesn't really know some of the fundamentals of the architecture of the software versus what you guys know and, and picking where you spend your development time? Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, right? Uh, obviously, we have more information than the end users on what we could be doing or features that you know may not be um, naturally intuitive to somebody that we could do. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely some balance there between us working on um, you know kind of the hidden features, the secret features right. that we you know know about that might be coming versus what users want. And I think that's again, that's really what that's about, right? Okay. Um, you know, asking the users what you guys want and just delivering on those. And we work with them in tandem, obviously, right? We don't you know. Um, only focus on one set or the other, and, and we've kind of proven that already. I mean, six-month turnaround, we delivered, uh, I think, three or four of the features. We, we have another one we'll talk about in a bit um, coming up in the slides. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely a balance there that we want to focus okay. on kind of delivering from both buckets, I guess would uh, right. be a good way to say it. Yeah, the, the other part of the balance is we want users to be excited, right? So if you release features that they, they haven't suggested or they don't really know about, um, it, it really gets them excited and it really gets them uh, involved with our software. Mm, okay. So it's important to have both user requested feedback and new features. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. All right, let's jump to the next slide then. Uh, Radeon Chill. Um, so I'm sure you're probably familiar with Radeon Chill. Yes. Yes. Um, for maybe people who aren't so familiar with it, um, Radeon Chill is a dynamic um, frame rate uh, targeting app. Basically, what it's going to let you do is it's going to dynamically change your frame rate based on how you're playing your game, the input to your game. And it's going to basically let you save a bunch of power at no cost to your gaming experience. So it's a very cool feature. Um, we have a bunch of new uh, 
uh, updates to it for this release. So I guess we'll start talking about some of those. Um, first up, we completely redid the controls for it. So previously, and I'll, I'll jump into Radeon settings for this. So previously, we had the controls in the Wattman page. Um, right, yeah. Which meant you had to accept an EULA to use the feature, um, which was not very intuitive. So we wanted to make it a little bit more accessible and easy and friendly for users. So we actually moved it to the gaming section now. So if you go into gaming and you go into global settings, we have new controls for chill. So chill is a feature that you turn on globally, and then you can turn on per game and set your actual uh, experience per game, which is really cool. So you want a different experience for something like Dota as opposed to something like Counter-Strike, right? right? Where you might want a little bit higher FPS. So we turn on chill. And then we can set it per game. So we'll go into Dota here. And we have chill controls per game now. Um, very easy to use. You set the slider. And again, the great thing about chill is you get to set your own experience, right? So uh, completely defined by what you want. And then chill will you know, use its smart algorithms to, to determine when it wants to lower that frame rate or when it can lower that frame rate and not really impact your end user experience. Right. Chill, uh, for maybe people who want a little bit more technical background on it, is it, it you mentioned it uses user inputs, right? Mm -hmm. Does that change per game? Like this is something that is profiled on a per game basis, right? So, right? so the profile we do do profiling per game, um, and really the the idea behind that it would be that um, you're right. Some games have different amount of input. Um, so you know, some games are probably a little less heavy on mouse and keyboard, or maybe a little bit less heavy on mouse or keyboard. So yeah, we do look at that stuff. There are algorithms in Chill that look at those kind of things, um, how much you're inputting uh, to your to your game. And that's kind of how we determine when we can lower and adjust that frame rate to save you that power. Right. OK. Um, we got lots of other stuff for Chill here, too. So um, API support. So we've brought in uh, Vulkan and DX12 support to Chill now. So we're going to be able to actually support those games. Um, obviously, that's very important. DirectX 12 and uh, Vulkan are you know, the emerging APIs. We're going to mm -hmm. start seeing more and more and more games on those. So it's really important to bring those into the fold for Chill. Um, and on that same note, uh, over 30 titles supported now. So we added a lot more games. Um, and we really looked at games that were more popular. We wanted to try to bring in the most popular games. So we have a chill whitelist on amd.com or, or radion.com. And uh, you can go look and see what games are supported there. But basically, we, we doubled our amount of game support right. um, for this release. So we added a lot of new games, a lot of popular games. Do you, do you emphasize games that tend to run at higher frame rates? Is that um, kind of where you target first? Well, interestingly enough, a lot of the popular games right now, or esports games, are actually running at higher frame rates. Right. So they were good targets natively anyway. Um, but that, that's a good point. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot more power saving on chill when your frame rate is much higher typically, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more, um, I, I think for us, it's a little bit more of top uh, targeting popular games, right? We want everybody to be able to have chill, be able to use it on those popular games that, that most people are playing. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're going to continue expanding that list and, and looking at ways to support many, many, many more titles in the future, for sure. OK. Actually, you know what? I did have a question that kind of is related to this. And I figured we might as well bring it in uh, into the mix then. It was about, um, so th this, the chill technology was part of an acquisition that you guys made. Mm -hmm. The all go yep. uh, group person did this. They also had other technologies like Boost. Do you have sure. any plans to implement any of those other technologies <laughs> into their into the drivers? Uh, I mean, we're always looking at, uh, at doing new features and cool features. That's definitely one we would be looking at. I, I can't comment, obviously, on if we're going to deliver it 100%. But you know, it's definitely something we are looking at, I would say that. OK. All right. OK. Cool. Um, more for chill. Uh, multi GPU support. So we're actually adding multi GPU support to Radeon Chill now. So even more power saving, especially on obviously multi GPU systems, you're going to be using a lot more power, higher frame rates. So that's great for MGPU users that want to use Chill. Uh, X Connect technology support. So the AMD uh, X Connect technology boxes that are shipping now, you're going to be able to use Chill on those now too. Right. Um, and then finally, we have laptop or hybrid graphics support. Um, obviously, this could be a potentially very big feature for people who want to save power on their laptops, maybe game a little longer. Um, I think we measured, how, do you remember how long it was? 34% more battery saving? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, hmm. so uh, roughly about 34% more battery saving on some of the test uh, systems we use for Radeon Chill. So very, very cool for uh, mobile and laptop uh, users as well. When you're doing this testing, is it automated? Is it manual? I'm just kind of curious from that standpoint. Um, like. We have a mix of a lot of, of both, right? So for example, a lot of this stuff was manual. We do a lot of automated testing, of course, as well with all of our software releases. Obviously, that's a big part of what we do as well. Uh, a lot of this stuff was manual, though. 
So, okay. so the other thing about chill is that it is about experience, right? We want to maintain the same experience with chill on versus chill off. Right. So right. because of that, we do aim for manual testing because then somebody can actually see their experience sure. and notice the difference. Sure. Okay. All right. Makes sense. Cool. All right. Let's jump to the next slide. Uh, Radiant Relive. Uh, we did have some questions in the chat about sure. the, yeah, the contest as well, too. Uh, the way the contest is going to work is if you go to PCBar.com, find the post that is talking about this stream, leave a question in the comments there. I'm looking through the comments uh, you know, live as we do this. Um, so if it looks like I'm not paying attention to them, keep in mind <laughs> I'm actually looking through your guys' questions. Um, and we'll I'll just pick out two that you know w haven't been touched on yet, and we'll, we'll just kind of give those to guys who are contributing to the conversation. Uh, I've got, I think I've got one already picked out, but we'll see if anything. Okay. Better Sounds comes good. up. So let's go ahead and jump into, into sure. changes to Relive. So Radeon Relive. Um, obviously, we launched Relive with our last um, you know, software release, uh, our last big software release. And that's our gaming uh, capture and streaming software. Um, so for Relive, we took a lot of end user feedback again. And we tried to incorporate it into uh, our updates for Relive in this driver release. So maybe I'll show the controls really quickly here. So for people who aren't familiar with Relive, we have a, a whole tab for Relive, and you can turn it on. Um, so basically, a lot of the focus was on these new um, these new audio uh, control features, um, and, and that was really a lot of again end user requests, right? So um, we added a lot of microphone support, for example, uh, microphone audio controls, um, audio boosting, uh, push to talk support. Obviously, that's very important for streamers, especially. You know, you don't always want to capture everything you're saying. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's a slip up, right? <laughs> uh, so we added push talk to talk support, and we added keyboard and mouse support for that as well. So you know, typically people use push to talk on their mouse. So obviously important to have it there. Um, and again, a lot of this was you know stuff that was requested from you guys. Uh, we also did a couple more improvements here. So we added camera transparency, so you can actually control the transparency of your camera. Maybe it's covering some UI elements or some HUD elements of your game. You want to just add a little transparency to that. Um, and we added uh, support for higher bit rates, so you can do up to a hundred. Uh, Megabits per second for a bit right now when you're doing recording. That seems like enough. Uh, yeah, probably. Do you, have, do you have any requests for people to go even higher than that? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> so I guess 100 megabits and you do resolutions up to what? Uh, you can do 4K, up to 4K. Yeah. Right now would be supported, yeah. Is there, has there ever been support in that for multi-display, like Affinity Capture? Uh, not a... today. No, that's not okay. something we support today. Basically, we support single screen right now. OK. Yep. Is there? A, is there a reason other than kind of development time that you wouldn't be able to do it? You could think um, of, or is it would it be something that maybe we I might it's, see? I think it's an interesting use case. Um, not a whole lot of ways to play it, that it's video not, back. Yeah, of it's, course, it's not a lot of ways to play it back. It might be an interesting <laughs> resolution. Um, I, I mean, in theory, it's probably something we could do. But I feel like the bigger focus, obviously, you do a lot of you know this capturing yeah. and streaming yeah, stuff yeah. yourself is probably single display. Sure. Oh, you for know, sure, for sure, definitely. Okay. And we'll go to the next slide. And Hanson, I think German's going to talk a little bit about this. Sure. Thanks, Adrian. Uh, let me kind of go over the high level um, kind do. of details of Enhancing, and then we'll kind of go into why we released this feature um, and how it benefits uh, FreeSync. So when we're looking at Enhancing, uh, what, what we're trying to solve is uh, we're trying to create a display technology which aims at minimizing uh, screen tearing uh, with low latency and decreasing stutter at an unlocked frame rate. So what does this mean? So uh, if you can go to the next slide. Um, this is kind of our initial issue. So mm -hmm. when you look at VSync, um, VSync, especially when your frame rate is above your refresh rate, you have a lot of latency. Um, and so for a lot of gamers, uh, they want that no tear experience, but at the same time, uh, they need ultra fast responsiveness, mm -hmm. um, which makes VSync not a viable option. Um, a, a lot of gamers, what they do is they use features like FRTC or Chill. Um, to limit their frame rate based off their free sync monitor. Um, we didn't want gamers to do this, right? We want the best experience possible. Um, when looking at the opposite, um, when your frame rate falls below your monitor's refresh rate, um, you get increased stutter. And so this is a terrible experience. Um, and and this, this does come with uh, removing uh, tearing, mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of the worst case scenario in either situation. Now, some people would say, well, this is why you created free sync. Right. So, how, how what's the what's the difference there between what Enhancing does versus FreeSync? So, FreeSync is a great uh, solution to remove tearing. Mm -hmm. um, 
the, the issue with free sync is that there is a range. Um, so it is dependent mm -hmm. on your monitor's refresh rate. Um, with enhanced sync, it is whatever is above your monitor's refresh rate. Okay. So whatever frames per second that you can get above your monitor's refresh rate is when enhanced sync kicked in. The great thing is that enhanced sync works with free sync, so that you get the benefits of both free sync and enhanced sync together. Uh, I, I would say FreeSync is definitely our best recommended technology for this, though, right? I, I mean, FreeSync is going to give you the best experience that you can possibly have in that range um, that your monitor would support. Okay. Enhanced Sync is really complementary, as German's saying, where you know above your your refresh rate of that display, that's when Enhanced Sync is really going to benefit you as well. And FreeSync requires you to buy a new display. Enhanced uh, Sync does enhanced not. Sync does not. Yeah, right. and that's another good point too. So maybe if you know you're um, you know not somebody who wants to buy a new display right now, then Enhanced Sync might be a good solution for you until gotcha. maybe you do want to upgrade to a free sync display. Okay, All right. Which is why uh, the better solution is to get uh, to use Enhanced Sync. So with Enhanced Sync uh, above your display's refresh rate, um, when your FPS is above your display's refresh rate, it right. shows the last rendered frame. So because of this, uh, there's low latency, um, and it also minimizes tearing. When you're looking at the opposite, when your frames, uh, when your frames per second, your FPS uh, drops below your monitor's refresh, refresh rate, um, you get decreased stutter. Um, there is occasional tearing, but there, it's a great trade-off if you consider both of them. Um, but this is why, actually, the best solution is to use it with a FreeSync monitor. Right. Because a FreeSync monitor will give so you, you that. So you combine both of them. Exactly. Okay. So in a, in a FreeSync display, I, I imagine there's two different modes that it would run in if you're FreeSync monitor has LFC, low frame rate compensation. You probably never worry about what happens below that range. Correct. Because right. it's always going to be a no tearing experience. And then above it, you are simply running at the. Exactly. And that's kind of what the okay. graphic is outlining here, I think, right? Yeah. If you look above, is enhanced sync and then free sync range down gotcha. to 30. Uh, wait, if you bought that display. So, I mean, that's. It sounds like a, a, a no-brainer thing for, for Radeon users to at least try. Enable oh, it, see if you like it, right? So even if you have your existing display technology, you don't have to have any... I think maybe some of the confusion comes around the fact that we're used to terms like G-Sync and FreeSync now requiring new hardware purchases. This does not... Uh, should be interesting and worth a shot. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And actually, I mean, I can really quickly show everybody where that is for people who maybe aren't aware and they have the software. Um, if you go into gaming... You can enable Enhanced Sync per game or globally. So, oh, okay. for example, if I went to Dota, it's right here. Wait for vertical refresh, and you can just enable Enhanced Sync for that game. So hmm. very easy to enable, very quick. Um, available per game as well, so you could even just try it for a few games if you wanted. Okay. That's good. But obviously, everybody cares about numbers. Yeah. Yes. So latency For people who care about Twitch gaming style stuff, these, these latency results are important. Absolutely. Oh, uh, especially. So if you look at a scenario where VSync is off, it obviously has the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. um, with VSync on, you get a ton of uh, latency that's added on to your gaming experience. Right. Um, and so this is where enhancing comes in. It gets you as close as possible to the VSync off experience um, while uh, removing or minimizing uh, tearing. Gotcha. I mean, this is a pretty no-brainer, like you said, Ryan. Uh, displays, for example, are pushing as low as they can for MS, right? 1 MS, 2 MS, those, those are gaming displays, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, you know, having a feature like this is really just going to help complement that exact same kind of thought of latency, right? Right, right. How does, where, where in this graph that we're showing on the slide, where does FreeSync compare in these metrics? Would you put it somewhere between... Enhanced sync and VSync off? Would it be matching VSync off, I guess? Well, FreeSync should have none between. Yeah, I think it would be there be somewhere between. It would between be matching VSync off, off inside that inside range. Inside of that range. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, if you're inside the range, exactly. That would right. be the, the caveat, I guess, for FreeSync. Okay. Good to know. Which is actually why to get the ultimate experience, um, especially because uh, your FPS does vary. Mm -hmm. um, it is good to have both enhancing on and FreeSync. Right, because with FreeSync, as soon as you go above the maximum refresh rate, you are again into that VSync on limited state. If you were to turn VSync on, yeah, okay. exactly. Gotcha. All right. And then uh, I don't even really need to talk about the number as much. <laughs> uh, the graph kind of shows it all. Um, with VSync on, when you're looking at an, uh, your frames per second below mm -hmm. a monitor's refresh rate, you get a ton of stutter. Um, and that's where the bar, uh, the gray bar goes both up and down mm -hmm. um, from 16 milliseconds to 32. Um, whereas that doesn't really happen for enhancing. 
So Ryan, you're pretty familiar with frame time graphs, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I've seen, so I've, seen I've seen a lot of graphs that look like that. Unfortunately, yes. So well, that yes. one should uh, the red speak line significantly better. Okay, yeah. And so you know, more important when you're kind of even more so when you're writing uh, one of those quantization lines of 45 FPS or 30 yep. FPS, uh, where you might go in back and forth between them quite a lot, which is what we see in those mm -hmm. in those jumps back and forth. Right. And and that's that's really the worst experience where someone has um, someone aims for 60 FPS where you go both above and below, right. and then you get what the gray bar shows. Right. So that's that's really a great experience. Now does this work experience. on 500 series, 400 series, Vega? I know you guys can't really talk about Vega, but it will work on Vega. Like, what about previous generations? Does it work further so back? Today, this feature is 400 and 500. Um, I can't speak about Vega, obviously, but I mean. Sure. It's you know, It'll be there. Assume. I can say it. It'll um, be there. <laughs> he said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, you can say it. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, what we support today. And obviously, you know, um, you saw the feedback. The feedback on number one is more product support for enhancing. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious to say that's probably something we're going to be looking at for a future release. Fair L enough. Like we kind of said before, the whole the whole point of this launch is uh, to refine based off user feedback. So based off that, it is the top requested feature. Um, we'll always look at it. All right, sounds good. Now, I think you guys have something else lined up here for the next slide mm -hmm. uh, for people who want to get a hold of the software earlier, either want to help more with the feedback. Right. Not program. that I'm predicting the future. <laughs> I just saw the slides ahead of time. Really. Um, so, so we have this new program called uh, the Renown Software uh, Vanguard Beta Tester Program. OK. Um, so basically what the program is is to give uh, s uh, special users, we'll say, um, an early look at our Renown software. So this really is to uh, increase the reliability of our software, um, as well as add new features, um, and, and to see what our users think of our software. So it really is for those avid gamers um, who are looking to see the next best thing early. So is this, is this your, uh, a consumer's way to get early access to features? <laughs> is this, do, what, you know, when I see beta, you worry about uh, stability issues and crashing. Do you, are you going to have to deal with some of that when you go into it? What are you kind of looking for? What, no. what kind of person should be looking to get into this program? Um, I mean, anybody can get into it. Anybody who's an enthusiast and wants to see an early look on software can get into that. And we're doing it for gamers and professionals, so our, our oh, workstation okay. users as well. Um, but, but no, I, I mean, we're not releasing something, you know, 10 months ahead of schedule. Mm. It's not like that. It's, right. you know, a couple weeks ahead where we're actually fairly stable at that point, obviously. We've passed a lot of our tests. And it's really just to get feedback from these end users. Um, you know, maybe they, they want to tell us that this feature is great. Uh, maybe this feature could be moved. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, stuff we can take from them. Um, there, and, and again, like you said, maybe there's some, you know, they have some issues. Maybe there's specific system set up. Um, has an issue, and uh, you know that's tough to deal with sometimes. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's a lot of system configurations in the world when you start thinking about how many different combinations of CPUs and GPUs and uh -huh. memory. And I mean, sure, you do a lot of testing, so I'm sure you're right. aware of this as well. Um, so it's a good uh, good way to get feedback on that stuff as well too. Mm -hmm. All right, next slide. Uh, reducing latency. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Did you want to jump in? No, no, go for it. Okay. Uh, so. With uh, this software release, we've obviously been looking at latency a bit more. Um, and that's kind of what the story of Enhancing really was, was looking at latency and improving latency for gamers. So this is kind of something we're also looking at, um, especially for new game launches now and for um, you know, our, our game-ready driver type of uh, releases, where we want to try to reduce latency as much as possible for the gamers. Obviously, there's competitive advantages when you're a gamer. You want to have the lowest latency possible. So this when is you, When you're talking about latency, we're not talking about just Frame latency, you're actually talking about measuring input to display Exactly. Latency. So we, we did right. all of this testing with high-speed camera. Um, and basically, you're exactly right. From the moment you do an input on your um, mouse or your keyboard, mm -hmm. and then actually seeing that, uh, that input come to life on your screen. So that's how we do that testing, absolutely. Um, and really, uh, this is more about kind of reducing that overhead that we might be able to control on the CPU and the driver um, you know, uh, and uh, frame cues and all of that type of stuff. So really just, um, I, I think from us, it's more of a, a strategy decision. Latency is very important. We want to really start focusing a lot more on latency. Um, and as you can see from the slide, we've got some great numbers already. Um, for you know, some of the titles we did some, some work for here, 31% uh, faster responsiveness in uh, Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, and this is really just about you know, helping out gamers and giving them that competitive edge. How is it different than just improving frame rate? Right, so I, I think it's fair to say that just improving your frame rate will reduce 
input latency yeah, to some degree, right? But you're doing more than that here, that's I true. assume, so, right? So I, we look at both things, though, right? So, I mean, performance is obviously, you know, king. We always look at performance. We always optimize for games um, on the release. And a lot of our game-ready drivers, if you're downloading those, um, you know, before your, your games launch, you're going to see those performance benefits. That's something we work on um, for all of those big titles. Uh, but you're exactly correct. There, there's kind of two ways to, to improve that. One is, you know, the actual performance, and then the other is this kind of, you know, removing the overhead that might be happening in some of the the software components and uh, improving latency that way as well. Right. So we're so we're doing both. We're doing both. Okay. Um, this one is just kind of the the newest kind of strategy we're trying to take for games. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's also good to note that uh, we kind of control the pipeline, right? So the three things that we really focus on um, is to reduce stutter. Um, and that's where we introduce stuff like frame pacing. Right. Um, we obviously send frames out in terms of FPS. Um, and that's where we focus on these driver over driver uh, performance enhancements. Um, and then things like reducing latency, um, limiting, uh, or shortening the pipeline so right. that we shoot out a frame faster. Now, much of this work, actually, I guess all of this work is done on DX9 and DX11 titles mm -hmm. now. Why are, are DX12 and Vulcan games kind of not included in, in this? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. So, um, story. you know, for, for latency, of course, we're looking at DX12 and Vulcan as much as we can. We're still very invested in those APIs. We're always trying to optimize those APIs. Uh, but the truth is, it's a, a little bit like Crossfire in the sense that those APIs have a lot more control over this component of the software than us. So for DX9, 10, 11, we have a lot more control, and that's why we've focused a lot of this optimization there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, we're obviously going to you know, look at improving and, and optimizing DX12 and Vulkan, of course, in the future if we can. Yeah. Okay. Just one of the inherent differences in the lower level APIs Ex is that, exactly the, that, that the APIs and the engines have more control over that exactly stuff than, that. than we've seen yep. in the past. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Next slide. Uh, GP profiler. So. Um, G games are kind of, uh, there, there's a holistic approach to developing games, right? It comes from both sides. It comes from um, how gamers play, um, and then game developers who are creating these solutions for uh, gamers. Um, it, it's important for us, being the software team, to understand both uh, and to optimize for both. Um, so one of the things developers have been asking us for really years um, is to come up with a solution for um, really open uh, and easy access to our hardware. Okay. Um, th this is actually something that uh, a lot of developers see on the console side, and, and they're jealous. They, they, they want something that they can see um, on the PC side as well. So this is where uh, RGP comes in. And it's uh, the first uh, hardware solution that allows for uh, in-depth game. Uh, it, it allows for uh, built-in hardware thread tracing. Okay. So basically, as, as a layman's term, um, you can basically see how your game code interacts with uh, the hardware we have. How is that different than a tool that has existed already today? Right? Like, what, what, what is this improving on? Uh, so there's a few different things. Um, one is, uh, and it's one of the bigger things that we have, um, is that it has a focus on DirectX and Vulkan. Um, also, it supports uh, Windows and Linux. Um, so to kind of have that holistic approach of uh, different markets. Yeah, I would say that this tool doesn't exist today for uh, for PC. It exists for a console. The the kind of um, information that you're going to get back from the uh, RGPU uh, profiler mm -hmm. is going to be way more detailed. You're going to get to break things down frame by frame. You're going to see how much um, each of the you know amount of time you're taking in that that draw that render all of the different components that are going into it how much ms you're getting into each of those or how much delay you're getting and you're going to be able to optimize a lot better for games because of this so you know this is a great tool for developers and i know developers are very very excited about it i think you had some some pretty good quotes from developers as well uh yeah so to kind of speak about, uh, upon that um what w we presented this um to a lot of developers under nda um and when they saw the tool originally, um, they were like, oh, it's just another tool, just another thing. Sure. Um, they presented things all the time. But as the presentation uh, kept going, um, their faces lighted up. Uh, and, and this is super difficult to get developers who have been coding for years um, to really be involved into new tools um, and change the way that they code. Right. So we have developers from EA, from Valve, from Machine Games, from id Software, just to name a few. Um, that really go uh, off on how much they can really do on this tool um, and just truly love it. So, sounds great. 
the majority of people watching this are going to be gamers. What does, so this is not a tool that's really not, like, I, you know, as a gamer, I, I guess I can download it and play around with it if I want to, right? Uh, but what's, what's it mean for gamers long term? More optimized games on release. Yeah. Better performance on AMD products. Well, okay. one of the things uh, I saw in, um, from what Roger says is uh, he looks at consoles as very efficient mm -hmm. um, to use truly all the power that they, uh, that they have. And so we're looking to bring that to the PC. Okay. I think we're probably out of time. And that's the last slide, actually. So I don't know if you have more questions you want to... I've got some questions. We've got some giveaways we've got to do, too. I've got some questions, <laughs> and we've got some video cards to give away. So I had, we had a collection of questions here, and I... And I of course, now that we've asked for questions in response for uh, getting, getting free hardware, there's like 500 questions on this <laughs> thing now. So just kind of scrolling through randomly and picking out a couple of good ones. But I did have some uh, that made sense up front. Uh, what do you guys view as like the state of VR for, for AMD on the driver side, right? Uh, you know, I think it's fair to say VR didn't pick up as quickly as most people had expected. Uh, but from a driver and optimization standpoint, feel like you're comfortable with, with where the Radeon software is at? Is there a um, lot more to do, or are you kind of just waiting for content to come out so that you can optimize for it? There's always more to do, right? There's always optimizations. There's always new rendering techniques that might be possible. And a VR, like you said, VR hasn't, I don't think it's completely taken off yet. There's still probably a little bit of a, a runway for that. Yeah. Definitely more content to come. Um, we're going to keep optimizing for VR. We're obviously very invested in VR. We have you know, AMD Liquid VR, whole SDK that's uh, supporting that. Um, hmm. Asynchronous Space Warp, actually we just supported more products with that earlier this year. Mm. Uh, asynchronous Reprojection from Steam, we uh, brought that in earlier this year as well. So yeah, we're still invested in VR, um, and I think we're just going to keep looking at optimizing it as best as we can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick one of, this question is one of our winners. This person will get one of the RX 580s that AMD brought. Uh, Ancient Radio Station is the username. This, this, is, this isn't you, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are you guys willing to talk about the perceived de-emphasis on Crossfire? Are you phasing it out? Is it just moving to a different way of doing it for future architectures? Okay. Um, you know, there's there's been a this kind of swell of hey, they didn't talk about Crossfire when they announced all the Vegas stuff. I know you guys can't talk mm -hmm. about Vegas specifically, mm -hmm. but from your standpoint on the software side, has anything changed? Um, well, APIs have changed a bit. Uh, so, you know, typically for Crossfire specifically, uh, DX9 through DX11, we invested a lot of resources into profiling apps on a per app basis. We right. created those profiles ourselves. Uh, DX12 and Vulkan have changed that. It's no longer something in our hands. It's something in the ISV's hands. Um, so it's really more of a question of uh, whether a game developer will support uh, Crossfire or not. Okay. But I would say on that same note, we haven't, you know, de-emphasized on Crossfire. I mean, we just had a slide with Radeon Chill supporting MGPU. Sure. I, I mean, that's, you know... We're still looking at expanding features into MGP as much as we can. We still support Crossfire where we can and where we can profile it for DX9 through 11. So, I mean, we're still, you know, making our best efforts for MGP, I think. Okay. Um, this came up a lot in the comments beforehand. Uh, so, I'm just going to kind of give this blanket. There were, there were lots of different specific Linux uh, detailed questions, mm -hmm. right? So, give me... If, if somebody comes to me and says, hey... What's up with AMD and Linux drivers? Is it is it why aren't they including as many features? Why aren't there as many updates? What would you what's your feedback to those types of consumers that come, come um, to us with? Yeah, that? I mean, well, we're still looking at Linux, right? We just had a AMD GPU Pro launch uh, with 17.7.2. It had a bunch of fixes in it. Um, hmm. If you've seen, I don't know if you've seen Pharonix articles lately. We've had a lot of great um, reviews on AMD GPU and how the you know performance is really taking off there. Um, well ahead of the competitors. We're doing a lot of great stuff there as well. So I think that the whole open source concept there has really paid off especially. Mm. So yeah, I mean, we're still looking at Linux. Um, obviously, you know, consumer gaming is more Windows focused. So that's where a bulk of the effort Dominantly. does really go. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you, you know, you got to focus most of your resources. But um, we are still looking at Linux and I, I think Linux will definitely see some cool stuff in the future. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think when a lot of these features go open source or we try to um, enhance our open standards, um, that's when users really uh, see the benefits. Um, so that's sort of the focus of both our GPU open technology and uh, how we approach Linux. Okay. What about mining, right? People have asked, like, uh, is AMD doing specific things in their drivers to uh, improve mining performance, to, to get that group in there and buying their cards? Have, is that something you guys 
spend a lot of time on, don't spend any time on? Uh, yeah, I mean, the mining uh, market segment is growing. Um, so it's definitely something that we are focusing on and looking at. And, um, you know, I, I can't commit anything feature-wise or performance-wise, but that's definitely something on our radar, I would say. Um, and you could probably expect some, you know, stuff in the future on that. Uh, this was a, a really interesting question we got early um, from Saul, S-A-W-E, I don't know if it's Saul way or Saul. Uh, Raja commented early in kind of the Vega release production process that uh, they were putting a lot of pressure on the driver team with this. And they're curious, like, how's that gone? Um, if the chip has been ready for a while, um, you know, how has the driver team had to, to shift resources or move things around to get that to work in, in a different way? Has, has, hmm. has Vega changed the production process no, for you no, guys No, I mean, product launches are, are always, um, uh, you know, very stressful as a whole, right? I mean, yeah. we have to have lots of resources on that. We're always looking to optimize the product as best as possible for its launch. So I don't think that's changed too much. Um, Obviously, uh, this is a big re uh, release coming up, and we're you know all hands on making sure that that's right. the best product that we can put out on the day of its launch. Is there is there is it divided up internally that there's there's a group working on Vega and then there's a group working on no, no maintenance no. of the current driver? Or something no, no, like that? It's, no, it's not really like that. Um, our, our development teams are more focused into uh, functional areas, so everybody kind of works on functional areas, and you know priority is is based on what's um, you know most important in that functional area at that time. Have you guys put any effort into uh, optimizing Radeon software for Ryzen or even upcoming Threadripper processes? Is there anything yeah, that goes course. into that? Yeah, I mean, we, we spend a lot of time optimizing for, um, you know, new CPUs as well. So we spent time on Ryzen, and we're spending time on Threadripper. We've spent time on Threadripper. Um, not much different than, you know, competitors or Intel. We, we optimize for those as well, too, obviously. Um, you know, we're really about delivering the best software experience on as many products as possible. All right. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? We asked about the Hialgo uh, uh, boost stuff, kind of got through there. Um, so I think this is going to be, let's see, we already went through that one. Oh, this was actually for the color settings. This was an interesting question that several mm -hmm. people echoed in the, in the chat room. The color settings, is, is there a plan or is there an ability to be able to set color profiles per application? Uh, we are definitely looking at that. It might be something that you see in a future release, but I can't comment on it. Okay. So it may, it may be coming. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I think I'm going to do uh, this other question from Corey as a winner. I, I like these, these general ones that are going to give us a little bit about uh, the story of background of you guys. So uh, Corey wants to know what hardware is in each of your personal systems. I have a Vega. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Okay. All uh, right. All right. And, uh, and which one? And how does it perform? I can't speak about that. And, Not yet. Uh, <laughs> water cooled or air cooled? Uh, air cooled. Okay. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Are you German? Yeah, I, I have a 480. I wasn't blessed to get a Vega like him. Um, <laughs> Going to be on the development <laughs> product side as, as the marketing side. They they don't, you don't need a Vega game. for yeah. slide making, right? <laughs> that, that's the problem. <laughs> you don't need a Vega for slide making. Um, also, uh, I have an old AMD CPU, um, whereas he probably has a Ryzen because we just gave him everything. That sounds, that sounds probably about right. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Was that another winner? Is that yeah, the no, that winner? was the winner as well. What question. about, what like about displays? Like, what do you guys use for displays? Uh, I have a BenQ 2730Z, so FreeSync, okay. uh, 144 hertz, yeah. and 20, uh, uh, 1440p. Okay. All right. That's where I'm not doing so bad. I have an AOC FreeSync monitor, a 27 inch, so okay. not not too bad. Nobody's, you guys haven't moved over to the 21 by nine aspect ratio no, displays yet. yet, anything no. like that? Not yet. We've got some of those FreeSync monitors sitting over here if you guys oh, want to check them out later. Yeah, for sure. So, or I'll take, take, one yeah, yeah. take one home. <laughs> <laughs> um, we asked about Crossfire's future. Um, yeah, I think I think that that, that that pretty much covers everything, and, and we've got if you guys have anything last little bit in the chat room, throw them out there. Uh, we'll see what we got that comes up with it. Uh, no, nobody's winning a Vega 64 today. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll see what happens. We're still still trying to pull those strings and get Raja out here for a live stream too. And if he does, I'll make sure he brings some of those, yeah, those cards definitely. to give away. So nothing else you guys want to share about what's coming in the rest of the year? Or uh, what we yeah, I expect? mean, we're, we're going to have that big release again end of year. So that's going to be coming. Um, Hopefully, we're going to be able to start talking about that in the next couple months, and uh, lots and lots of cool stuff there. Uh, I'm actually very excited about it as a gamer, so uh, hopefully that speaks volumes uh, to what's coming. 
Okay. All right. That sounds good. Well, guys, uh, thank you for flying all the way out here to Kentucky. Sorry about the flight delays yeah. that occurred, <laughs> uh, you know. Hey, we didn't have bad weather this time. The power didn't go the out. The power didn't mm. go out Two like years ago, time. he was That's here. True. The power went out in our yeah. studio. That was exciting. So was much fun. much calmer this time around, guys. So. Thank you so much for your time, by the way, Ryan. Absolutely, absolutely. So where uh, where do people go to find the feedback forms, download the drivers? Is it all at Radeon.com? Yeah, AMD.com or Radeon.com. Um, and like I said, uh, and I showed earlier, we do have for the feedback, there's a star in the top right of Radeon settings. You can just click that, and it'll take you directly to that page. Sounds good. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for us. Uh, check us out at PCPro.com. We do more of these live streams. Actually, if you're watching this live at 10 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do a podcast today. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff as well. We'll probably go over some of this discussion as well as all the other stuff from the week. So uh, thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at Patreon.com slash PCPer.